The government subsidies for the faster adoption of electric vehicles in India gave the initial nudge to the EV ecosystem. Now reports are emerging that claim that the subsidies are being on a rollback path. To understand the impact of those subsidies rollback, we are once again joined by the Prince Auto Expert Kushan Mitra. Welcome Kushan, welcome to the print, welcome to the dashboard. Yes. Uh, what is fame first, if you could uh, let our viewers know briefly? It, uh, you remember this, the government likes acronyms. So this was faster adoption of manufacturing of electric and hybrid vehicles. But hybrids were removed, so it's faster adoption of manufacturing of electric vehicles in India. So fame is that there was a fame one that was there in the first NDA government, first Modi term, then you had fame two, which is this term, and now this talk of a fame three. Fame two will end on the 31st of March, right. 2024. And even though fame two has uh, been uh, adapted and modified a bit in the past few months as well, um, because the government thought that several companies were playing around with the subsidies. So right now the subsidies for, particularly for two-wheeler electric vehicles came down drastically. Right. Fame is not applicable to private electric car buyers today. Um, it's only applicable to say, you know, you see those electric cabs going around or electric uh, commercial vehicles, three-wheelers, right. four-wheelers, electric buses, those are covered under fame. But fame is today just the only private buyer who can take advantage of fame too is the uh, private uh, passenger, two, pa private two-wheeler buyer. That's it. Okay, uh, Kushan. But uh, coming back to the the reports uh, mm -hmm. suggesting a slash or a rollback of the subsidy, or maybe the scheme sort of moving towards minimization in its next phase, if it comes, uh, then this is not the first time. I remember, like about six eight months ago, you wrote for the print. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, how there was a slash in subsidy back then as well. Yes, that was. had forced manufacturers to uh, pick up a different, uh, uh, you know, category of uh, to 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 to, yes. to offer different category of automobiles to the customers, which were more uh, accessible. So initially, the government was giving a subsidy of around fifteen thousand rupees per kilowatt hour of battery on a two wheeler. Right. Uh, which and the subsidy was up to 40 to 45 percent of the value of the two wheeler. Now the subsidy has been cut to 10,000 rupees per kilowatt, only up to 15 to 20 uh, percent of the value of the two wheeler. So the skew earlier in fame was that manufacturers obviously be getting such a huge subsidy were making fairly powerful two wheelers, you know, right. one that could go fast. Right. Uh, you know, 100 kph plus, had 100 kilometers plus of range. Uh, instead of promoting more commuter driven products that not necessarily so fast, you know, 75, 80 and more limited range with smaller battery packs, lighter battery packs. The subsidy, I think, had encouraged the production of more powerful products, which is not a bad thing. I'm right. just saying that uh, the skew was like that. So, and there was also a feeling that the government had been played by certain manufacturers because um, uh, in the subsidy, there's also, as it's called fame, adoption of manufacturing. Right. There was also a phase manufacturing program. Obviously, uh, we all know a lot of the components for electric vehicles, whether they're cars, buses, you know, three wheelers, two wheelers, all come from China. Right. The government wanted 50% of the value addition to be happening in India. Uh, which is a problem more on a two-wheeler because the battery is a significant part of the cost. Now, certain manufacturers have started making the battery packs in India, but many manufacturers took advantage of fame, did not follow the phase manufacturing program mm -hmm. guidelines. And a lot of them uh, were under scrutiny also. They've been under scrutiny, they've been raided. Uh, many of them, the government's held back payments, which has put some genuine small startups under a lot of financial stress because they don't have working capital. Um, now, even though it must be admitted that some of them had uh, 
played with the rules. You know, some were nothing more than, you know, many people talk very derisively of the defense industry in India right. being a screwdriver shop. Some of these were screwdriver shops. You're right. getting, uh, uh, you know, knockdown kit from China and just assembling it and saying how you're doing tech. And I've seen many of them. Uh, companies like Ola and Aether, Vida, uh, Bajaj and TVS have to be complicated because they're doing proper manufacturing in India. Right. And Ola just, I believe, has hit its 50% value addition uh, targets. Uh, but the loss of subsidy obviously made a problem because uh, everybody compared all these scooters to the Honda Activa, right. which is the best-selling petrol scooter in India today. Right. And with the subsidies, with the earlier subsidies, the Honda Activa and say something like a Ola S1 or a Aether 450X were within, say, 5,000 rupees. And when you consider the running cost of electrics being next to nothing, right. they were uh, competitive. Right. Kushan, coming to the main question that, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's, uh, that's a question that I think it's all stakeholders Mm -hmm. would be asking uh, right from consumers to the manufacturers to in fact even the government that wants uh, EVs to run on the roads in mm -hmm. this country. Do you think uh, it's too early for a uh, you know, on a roll or to for India to go on a rollback path even though uh, there are few countries uh, around the world which are on this already on this path right now of a, of a, of a rollback of subsidies. Many countries having a rollback of subsidies. Many countries are also now looking at the fact that one nation, China, controls the entire manufacturing ecosystem for electric vehicles. Of course, China has built champions like BYD, like SAIC, like uh, Geely Motors, Cherry Motors in electric vehicles. Right. Um, nobody wants to really be dependent on China. You know, you, if you're following the news, you know the, why uh, that is so. I don't think there should be a rollback. I think electric vehicles definitely in a city like Delhi make a difference. Uh, you can see more and more electric cars in Delhi. You know, I'm, if you drive around, you'll see so many more. In fact, just a couple of days ago, Tata brought down the prices of their uh, popular Nexon.ev and um, Tiago and Tigo.ev. Uh, I just drove the Tata Tiago ICNG, which is and its base model only 10,000 rupees cheaper than a Tiago.ev, same car. Right. Uh, and CNG is cheaper than petrol, but you know, you're choosing between CNG and uh, uh, electric. Right. So that's, that's, that's an interesting development because uh, uh, up until now, uh, it's established, especially in the minds of the consumers, that the electric buy is going to be the expensive one and they have to plan, uh, plan it. And, uh, uh, but because now these, you know, news of uh, prices being reduced, yeah, uh, coming in, uh, they are all also in a way a sign that there is certain level of sustainability that is entering the ecosystem. No, no, I think the manufacturers are choosing quite aggressively to reduce margins. Now, you can read this another way. Whenever prices come down, is it a sign that the market is softening? Right. So whenever a manufacturer starts offering discounts or right. cuts prices, is the market softening? Right. right. We saw that with the Jimny, uh, when the prices, oh, is the market softening? I mean, the Jimny sold just about 170 units last month. Um, so that is one, that's one way of reading this. Right. Uh, I don't see the market softening in a deadly NCR with all our uh, grab rules. Right. Uh, but uh, in other parts of the country, maybe not. Maybe people are saying, know, maybe there is no economics on buying an electric vehicle. Um, but yes, these easier to afford prices will definitely convince some people who have not gotten. We recently drove the Mahindra XUV 400 and made a video in the print uh, with this car, at, and which at honestly at 17 lakhs, and given the mind in Delhi, for EV, you just pay road tax and registration. There is uh, road, no, you don't pay road tax and right. registration or just insurance. They're very affordable. So it, it's not just a good electric SUV, it's a good C segment SUV, period. Right. So, same with the, with the Nexon and other cars.
right so kushan uh, there are talks of a third phase of the of the, of fame, fame, yeah. of the fame phase 3 which is which may start next financial year yes or maybe after the new government is in or something More like likely, that more likely yes how do you see that one coming in the the outlay in the second one if i am not mistaken was uh, 10000 crore uh, so do you do you see that amount uh, coming down or maybe there'll be a different spread i think you have will have to look at fame 3 along with the performance linked incentives that they have given manufacturers setting up batteries now right. uh, many manufacturers whether it's um, you know tata motors maruti suzuki uh Volvo Aisha they've all taken up the PLI but now Hyundai has also applied for the PLI um the PLI will play a bigger role in encouraging manufacturing uh and once manufacturing i mean JSW group just announced they are setting up a 40000 crore lithium plant in Odisha which will refine do a lot of that of course you yet to see i mean announcements are not final level right. so until you see the physical right. infrastructure in place but as we have noticed with say PLI for air conditioners or PLI for mobile phones there has been more and more value addition in india right uh, so if PLI for batteries works PLI in conjunction with fame 3 which might bring down the demand side subsidy i think fame 3 should look at more um, charging infrastructure particularly on the new york expressways right. uh, one thing that we've noticed this winter in the in western developed countries with electric cars is particularly where they get really cold like in canada and you know the northern us is that evs have had major charging issues right right india of course doesn't have those extreme cold weather at certain parts but more chargers uh one complaint i have uh driving an electric myself for the last 8 months with the hyundai ioniq 5 is they're not enough they're not enough fast enough chargers on the right. expressways right. you have some excellent high speed chargers in delhi and gurgaon but you don't need to use them if you have a charger at home and honestly if you buy an electric vehicle whether it's a two wheeler whether it's a for we like you need to have a charging system at home right because and what's your uh, individual take on uh, on on the on the subsidies in india going ahead uh, should they continue for how long they should continue in, and in what segments uh, because now you have you have you have uh, had the chance to speak to a number of uh, of mm-hmm. manufacturers uh, automakers and what is the feel on the ground i think that you should continue to have subsidies in things like you know electrifying public transport as you can see in delhi i believe uh, a couple of days ago uh, one bus manufacturer jbm launched 300 electric buses in delhi uh, which would be a good thing i mean electric buses are quieter they're less polluting i think uh, economics you can if you drive around delhi bangalore mumbai you can see more and more electric commercial three wheelers carrying your goods you can see electric two wheelers your amazon delivery or zomato or swiggy whatever food delivery you have is on electric two wheeler it it has to make sense at the end of the day for people to buy as i said car buyers do not get any subsidy anymore right for electric vehicles right and they're still buying them they're still buying whether it's a 1 crore uh, bmw or audi or if it's a uh, uh you know 10 lakh rupee uh, tata tiago they so, see sense in the car so you're saying uh, the market is is responding a and yeah. b uh, even the government is taking the feedback and now yeah. it's maybe it's going to if we, we can't get into the exact uh, money that's that's going to be it to be uh, disbursed but we can look at the spread yeah. of it and in the allocation as you said the char- charges uh, are charges uh, and for example the government well there's not a subsidy you can't call it a subsidy but keep in mind delhi government doesn't charge road tax and registration on right. electric vehicle that's indirect i mean right. you only pay 5% gst right. on a uh, electric see a bmw x5 you would ordinarily pay 43% gst you know with and plus more ses a bmw ix which is the same size costs more or less the same because you're only paying 5% gst right right so those are indirect subsidies as well i mean um, god knows how much longer the government can sustain a lower gst right but maybe that's not going to change immediately so there are indirect subsidies right uh, direct subsidies i do believe will but the market will respond accordingly uh, ola has 
cut prices by 25,000 rupees just uh, today, right. I believe. Right, right. So, I mean, it's uh, again, as we always uh, say, cliche as it may sound, an evolving situation in the EV market. Yep, yep, evolving. And, uh, so, that's all uh, for the EV and subsidies today. Uh, Kushan would uh, let us know what's more in dashboard. So, uh, this weekend you'll obviously read about uh, the new Prime Minister's car. Uh, if you've probably read it already. Uh, and coming up next week, I'll be actually right now tomorrow, I'm heading to Natrax in Indo. Natrax is the official testing site for the Indian automotive industry. It's been built at Pitampur outside Indore. And they have an 11.2 kilometer banked oval, one of the best in the world and the largest in the Asia Pacific, where along with Volkswagen, we'll be doing a 24 hour endurance run for made and trying to set a national record for a made in India car. Uh, how long it go over 24 hours? I'm not driving it for 24 hours, there are many of us, but yeah, it will be, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be uh, challenging, you know, driving round and round in the oval for 24 hours or even for one hour or one and a half hours as I will be doing. It will be fun. Let's yeah, see. So it Looking seems, forward seems to that. Sort of fun. Well then, with this we come to this episode of the Print Dashboard. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Kushan. Thank you, Anurag.